Hey there, folks. This is Cleric Returns, returning to you with another episode of Kerbal Space Program. I thought we'd try something different today, something new with the point two two, and do a career mode. Oh yeah! Let's name this bad boy Cleric Return. Oh, lowercase e. Thank you. Cleric Returns, and let's get the good old KR flag, the KRKSP, and we're gonna start career mode. Uh, I figured uh, I'll, I'll get into more detail when we hit the VAB. I will see you in a moment. All right, so here we are at uh, Kerbal Space Center, and I was thinking, you know, I recommend Kerbal Space Program to a lot of friends, and they'll try it, and they'll just they'll get so frustrated. I mean, they'll enjoy blowing things up. I mean, who doesn't? But they'll get frustrated with uh, the career mode and all the sciency complicatedness and uh, how few tutorials there are built into the game. So I thought, you know what? It would be it would be good of me having played over 140 hours of this game, according to Steam, uh, to kind of do a tutorial, especially of the new updates with all the science situation. So we're going to start this tutorial at the Space Center. Uh, this over here is the launch pad, where you launch rockets, of course. This is the tracking station. You can see the, the name is down here in the bottom left, the tracking station, where you can look at all the ships and debris and um, carbonauts. Uh, that you've got going on all at once throughout the, the solar system. Uh, this is the research and development building uh, where you will research and develop things. <laughs> so uh, That's where you spend your science points and you get your science points by building ships and taking them places. So you build a rocket in the vehicle assembly building also known as the VAB or you build a space plane or otherwise uh, atmospherically inclined uh, aerial vehicle. That was way too complicated. You build, you build planes over here in the space plane hangar. They don't have to go into space, but you can build planes. And then you've got the astronaut complex, uh, where you can manage and add more astronauts uh, to the UI to launch in your rockets and or planes. So, uh, in the very beginning, you will want to go to the VAB, because you don't have airplane parts yet. So I'm going to go into the VAB, and I will see you in there. Alright, here we are in the VAB. Uh, lots to look at here, uh, but we're going to start out simple by building our first rocket. So over here on the left, uh, you've got different categories of parts, and then down here you'll have parts with their descriptions. Most of it uh, you can ignore. I'll try and point out the important parts as we go here. Uh, but for our first rocket, uh, you know, I probably won't cover any of that this episode. I'll save it for a future one. But for our first rocket, we'll need our Command Pod Mark 1. And for every rocket, you need some propulsion. So we can do this guy. So this, you'll see, uh, under uh, the 1, 2, 3, see there's the description, and then resources. You see it has liquid fuel and oxidizer. That means that it is fit for this liquid fuel rocket engine. Uh, later on, we're going to get uh, stuff for planes that's just going to have liquid fuel, but no oxidizer. Uh, which is great for planes, because they suck in air from the atmosphere, uh, obviously, which has oxygen and acts as an oxidizer, providing thrust. Uh, but for rockets that go into space, they need to bring their own oxygen with them. Uh, so you'd want to use this uh, liquid fuel plus oxidizer for rocketry. Now the other item we have here is a solid fuel booster, which is like a self-contained like bottle rocket, fireworks type situation. <laughs> it's uh, don't worry, it doesn't explode when it reaches the top. But um, qu uh, if you look underneath, uh, what's that section under manufacturer description, and then engine power at the very bottom of that one, it says engine cannot be shut down. That is very important. It will burn as soon as you light it all the way until it is done, just like a bottle rocket. Uh, do I want to put one here? Not really. We're going to put them on the side. So let's grab a couple more fuel tanks so you can stack them like this. And the game will automatically drain this one, then this one, then this one. Uh, to move your ship around, you grab it by the command pod. Left click. And uh, three is good enough. We'll throw one little engine on the bottom there. And we'll throw, I think, a couple of these on here just to get some fun thrust. And so we have symmetry mode and angle snap. So angle snap is, see it kind of like clicking into place as I move the mouse around? If I turn off angle snap, then you can just kind of like 
put it just about anywhere. But I, I like angle snap because it lets you use symmetry mode much easier. So symmetry mode, as you click it, you'll see you got two little marks here. That's going to put two rockets on your rocket. Uh, two solid boosters as we have in our hand. You can do up to three, all the way up to eight, I think, is the maximum. You can left click to cycle through and right click to cycle back through. So let's just do two. And we'll attach them. There, looks good. Uh, maybe a bit lower. Can we get them low? Yeah, that'll do. Alright, so we've got our pod and our propulsion and that's pretty much all we need for a rocket we don't even need these solid boosters but they're just a lot more fun uh, let's see if we've got anything else here uh, modular girder segment <laughs> so uh, this one you could put your rocket boosters on here your solid boosters uh, if you wanted a little bit more of a different design uh, but basically these are used as like a structural element uh, they're very lightweight but very strong at the same time. If you have a crash, usually they'll survive. Uh, they have a high impact rating. Um, but in this case, we're, we're going to skip them. Uh, normally, you would use them in conjunction with uh, something called a, a separator, which lets you break pieces off of your rocket uh, as you're flying, like like staging, like you would normally expect to see uh, on, a, on a regular real, real world rocket. Uh, and then we've also got a parachute, very, very important, especially for science mode, excuse me, career mode, uh, if you would like to uh, actually land on the planet instead of blowing up <laughs> when you come back down. Uh, so the parachute, very essential, and I think, oh yes, we've got the communa, communicatron, communotron, it's the communotron. So these we only need one of, uh, you can cycle the symmetry mode with X, by the way, uh, and shift X to go backwards, and then angle snap, you toggle with C. And let's see, we only need one of these, and we probably don't even need one altogether, but we'll do one anyway. So there we go, you can, uh, in the VAB here, you've got a couple different things that you can do as far as moving around each of these parts. Uh, so you'll see with this one, Oops, can I grab it? There we go. Uh, that I moved it around so that I could kind of point it in the direction that I wanted. So you can use W, A, S, D, Q, and E uh, to move things around in, in different positions. If you hold down shift, they move just a little bit. If you do it without shift, they move quite a lot. Uh, so you can also hit space bar to return it to its original orientation. And let's point this kind of up-ish. How's that look? Great. All right. And uh, the way I'm zooming in and out is mouse wheel while holding down shift. You can also use the plus and minus buttons on your number pad, should you have one. Uh, Sub-assemblies, we'll get there later. I think we've got everything that we need. Over here, you, you saw me do it earlier. This is called the staging area. This lets you control what happens when. So uh, it considers it as like everything in number two is going to happen at once when you hit the space bar. Uh, so both of these rocket boosters, you can see them highlighting in green when I mouse over this item. Uh, they're going to launch at the same time, and then as soon as those burn out, I'll hit space bar again. We'll launch this main engine. Uh, this, I don't know why they have that on on the staging currently. Anyway, after we're, <laughs> after we're done with that, uh, we're going to do the parachute, uh, which will let us land safely, hopefully. And before we head out, let's make sure that we give our spacecraft a name. Booster Gold. I've been playing a lot of DCUO lately, and that's the first thing that came to mind. Uh, these other things, action groups, uh, we'll visit later. Uh, crew, we can take a look at right now. We've got the option of Jebediah, Bill, or Bob, and different levels of courage and stupidity. Bill, very courageous, very stupid. Bob, he's usually the unhappy one. He's too smart for his own good. But Jebediah is the favorite. Perfect courage, perfect stupidity. All right, with that in mind, we've got our flag ready, everything ready, ready, ready. Let's click save, and I will see you on the launch pad. I'm going to cut to it because it, it gets a little weird in my in-betweenness. So I will see you on the launch pad. 
All right, here we are on the launch pad. Uh, you can hold down right click to move the camera around and mouse will be able to zoom. So the thing with career mode is it's all about the science. So the way that you get science, a uh, couple different ways, but right now what we're starting out with is just this command pod, which means I can right click on it We've got a couple of options. Control from here, which we should already be doing. Rename vessel. We've already given it a name. Uh, toggle torque, which uh, well, there's like a little torque wheel inside that uh, uses electricity to keep the rocket going straight, kind of. <laughs> it's a, it's a, like a gyroscope, like a gyroscope. Uh, and then the final one here is important for science. Crew report. So with crew reports, you can take them uh, at at basically different stages of your flight. So here we're on the ground. So we have a crew report from the launch pad. You uh, you record the crew's assessment of the situation and it is worth a scientific value of 1.5. So we're going to keep that for now. Even though if we transmitted it, it would be 100%. Uh, let's look up here. So we got our electric charge, uh, which shows us how much battery power we have. And when we communicate something or transmit something, it's going to use up some of this electric charge, and right now we're not burning the engines or anything, which some some engines, most engines, will replenish electric charge. Uh, some don't. That's very important to keep in mind. We'll get into that later. But anyway, so we're going to save it until we're at least flying, uh, or if we keep it, we can just recover the whole thing when we land. And since we are not moving, we can also do an EVA, extra vehicular something. I totally forgot what that means. So while he's on the ground, he's going to hang out on this ladder. If we did this while it was up in the air, he would just fly off. Uh, but while we're on EVA, we can take an EVA report, which you can see is a, a beautiful 5.6 science value. So we have an EVA report while flying over Kerbin's shores. Uh, it's considered flying because he's not actually on the ground. Uh, so he's just kind of on the ladder there. And it says, this is a most precarious situation. Indeed it is, sir. Indeed it is. Uh, so while we're outside, nothing else we can do, so I'm going to hit F to board. And we can see here that the EVA report while flying over Kerbin's Shores was stored. That means that it is in the command pod now, and if we wanted to look at it, we could review the stored data. Do we take a crew report? Yeah, so if you uh, click on something and try and take a report or do some science that you've already done and are keeping, it'll say, oh, do you want to overwrite? And I will choose cancel this time. So we've done our crew report on the ground, we've done our EVA report on the ground. I think it is time that we went up in the air. So, to prepare for every launch, here's my personal uh, process that I go through. First I'll hit T, uh, which turns on SAS. Basically it keeps uh, your rocket flying straight, or as straight as possible, uh, with the gyroscopes that are built into this guy, and later on you get specific separate ones that you can add on. But, yes, we'll get to that. So first I hit T, then I will hold down the shift button, uh, which will put the throttle up. You can uh, hold down control to put it back down, but I'll hold it back up and we'll put it at 100% just because we're going to go for as much height as we can possibly get. Personally, I prefer to have the resources up as well, so you can just left click on that and it'll uh, keep it up. If you left click again, it'll disappear until you mouse over it. Uh, so here I like to monitor the electric charge, which as we have the SAS on, you can see it's at 0.01 electricity per second, I think, is how that works. And then we've got our fuel reports here. Uh, fuel all the way up, SAS on. Uh, if there's lights, usually I'll hit the U key, as in unicorn, uh, in order to turn lights on. But we got no lights on this thing yet. And so instead I'm going to zoom out a bit because it's going to get a bit loud and hit spacebar and away we go. So now while we're up in the air, I will take another crew report and see if it'll let me. No, it won't. So the way crew reports work is at each stage of the atmosphere, which if you look up here at the top at your altimeter, uh, there's a couple things we can point out while we're here. There's the light blue section, which is the lower atmosphere. Let me try and take another crew report. Nope. Uh, so we're still in the lower atmosphere, which is the light blue section. Then you got middle atmosphere, hitting the space bar to cycle up to the next engine. Uh, in the medium blue is the middle atmosphere, then very thin atmosphere, and then space up at the very top. 
So you can watch uh, your altitude here, uh, which is your altitude to sea level. So sometimes the ground will be a little bit closer. And as we pass into this medium blue, I think that I can take another crew report. No, I can't. I could do an EVA report, but we'll see where we come out. Um, let me try it again. I just want to try it. Crew report. Nope. Darn it. Okay. In the future, we'll be able to do different science at different altitudes. Uh, so, back to the explanation. So, this little dial here lets you know how fast you're going up or down. And we have just run out of fuel, and I've got nothing else to do. So, we're just going to chat while we coast through space. So, I'm passing 55 kilometers, very high up. And you can see the ground still passing away. And you can see that we're still accelerating, not really accelerating, but I guess rising at over a thousand meters per second. As we start to fall, it'll come back down, and as we fall faster and faster, this number will, uh, this dial will decrease. So this dial also corresponds mostly to this number down here. So we're going up basically at uh, about 1100 meters per second. So as this drops past that thousand mark, this should drop past that thousand. Um, anything else to cover up here? So we got brakes, you can toggle them on and off, gear, and lights also toggleable. This is the letter B, the letter G, and the letter U, like I said earlier. Uh, this is the abort key, which if you set up an action group, which we'll get to at another time, uh, you can set up an abort mode where you click this, and it will cause whatever you want to happen to happen. So while we're up here in space, we're going to go on EVA. Gonna hit L to turn his lights on. He's got a different light button. And normally I'd fly away, but we're kind of almost falling back towards the planet. So we'll just take a EVA report from here. And you can say EVA report from space just above Kerbin's shores, uh, which kind of is a hint the shores part. So you can take it over the shores, over the ocean, the mountains, the deserts, and you'll get different science points for each one. That is very key, especially early on. So we can fly if we wanted to fly this way and go over these mountains here get different science points while we're over top of that one and it becomes great when you get your first orbit so you can take different EVA reports uh, as you fly over different uh, parts of the planet we will board again with letter F just like it says on screen and C we've got this one stored zoom, zoom out and you can see now that we have data stored quantity 2 so I'm going to take a crew report and I can't Man, you can only take one permission, unless we choose to transmit, which, uh, we could. You know what? Let's do it. So what we can do is if we want to transmit everything, we can click on our little antenna, click transmit data, and it'll send everything. But I don't think we've got enough power for that. So instead, we're going to go here and review, and this one is worth... Eight, but we get 50%, so I want to hold on to that one until we land. 50%, hold on to that one. 50, 50... I guess that's everything. I thought we had one. Okay. Well, let me do the crew report. That's interesting. Very interesting. That's okay. Um, we'll address that at another time, I guess. I don't, I don't know why it's doing that. I thought I had the option. Anyway. Anyway, so where were we? We covered everything up here. And you can see that we're slowly, slowly reaching our peak. So let's let's find out just how high we are and what our arc is going to look like and where we're going to land. So to do that, we'll pull out to the map, which is the letter M, as in Michael, Mary, Mother, and manliness. <laughs> I couldn't think of a good word. Uh, so this is a diagram of our... Uh, altitude, our, our course trajectory situation. While we're zooming out here, there's the moon and Minmus, the two moons of Kerbin. So here we are approaching our apoapsis, which is the very, very peak. On the other side, if we had an orbit, would be the periapsis, which is the, the low point in the orbit. So this high point, 200,000 meters. 200 kilometers. Pretty darn high up for a first mission, if I do say so myself. So we're going to start crashing back down soon, and we're going to land in the ocean, as we can see right here. 
uh, while we are on our way down, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we need to do to talk about. So we have uh, staging is always displayed here, so we know where we're at. And I'm just going to hit space and deploy the parachute. But you'll see, obviously, that it hasn't deployed yet. And basically it'll wait until it hits... Um, I forget where it hits. Somewhere in one of these... Somewhere in there. <laughs> uh, I think as we approach this this uh, light blue section, it'll deploy automatically and then fully deploy at 500 feet above sea level or above whatever ground you're on. Um, so that's all done. Over here, you can see that we can go up and down, left to right, and pitch and roll. Uh, and here, you've got your kind of dial, so you can dial it in. You can see as you move around, it'll automatically disable SAS while you're moving. And if you want to, if you want to, I guess, stay where you're at, so I can, like, turn here and then see how it kind of bounces back. Well, if I want to stay pointing straight up, then once I hit here, I can toggle the SAS off and back on, and it'll kind of reset it to that position. Uh, and I do that with the letter F. So when you hold down F, it toggles it. Uh, other options, we can hit X, which will bring our throttle completely down to shut off all engines. It's auto-saving, beautiful. Auto-saving, that's a good point. F5 is your friend. F5 for quick save. Quick save lets you jump back to that point at any time by holding down the F9 button. Oh my goodness, I have said so many keys this episode, and it is getting long. So, because it is getting long, let's time warp. We can either click on these, or we can hit the comma or period button. The period will go faster in time. Time warp. And it'll automatically slow me down as I re-enter the atmosphere here. And you'll see once, once now that I've kind of re-entered this atmosphere gauge, I've only got four options instead of the full ten or so. Probably, oh, probably eight. Maybe nine. Anyway, so this is a different kind of time warp. When we're out in space, we can just kind of Warp and do stuff really quick and, you know, interplanetary travel, which would normally take a long time. We can warp to 10,000 times the normal speed. Oh, see, we just hit the parachute deployed at about 20 kilometers or so. And we can see our G-forces uh, are really high as we are slowing down incredibly quickly. Yeah, but Jebediah is smiling the whole way. That's why we love Jeb. Good old Jeb. So this uh, this time warp, if we do it uh, now, it'll do kind of like a, a physics warp where it'll calculate things at a different rate. And basically, I, I don't recommend it if you're going to be doing anything important like landing, uh, simply because it's much more likely that your ship is going to explode or tear apart or have bad things happen. Whereas normally, oops, whereas at normal time, it'll work just fine. There we are. See? 1,100 meters, even though uh, it, it should be 500, but uh, it's because the ground is, uh, what would that make it? 600 meters up, I guess, is the, the ground level. So it'll always deploy 500 above where you would normally land. So uh, once the parachute is deployed, I'll usually speed it up all the way until just before I hit the ground. Whoop! <laughs> and we had a little explosion anyway. But we survived, and that's the important point, because now we get to recover it, and this is actually in a perfect position, because good old Jeb, here, let me turn SAS off, make sure we're stable, we're going to have Jeb jump out, and if we right-click, we can take an EVA report, because we are flying, quote-unquote, over the grasslands, keep that data, and we hit spacebar to let go, and while we're on the ground... We can take a, another, nope, we can take a surface sample, which is worth nine. Nine science value, but yep, it looks like dirt. So we'll keep that one, jump back in, board again, and you can see that the surface sample and uh, the EVA report were both taken, and I think I think we tried to do a crew report. I always forget, it's like I just, I just want to spam that button. Um, but yes, I think we've actually done everything and covered everything. Let's hide this. Take a screenshot. You gonna, you gonna work with me? 
Uh, so to take a screenshot, let me see if I remember these things. Hit F2 to make everything appear. F12. Click to take a screenshot. And that is going to be awesome. Uh, so now that we've finished everything through space, through flight, we've done an EVA report, we've done a surface sample, we have landed safely back on Kerbin. We can mouse over this and click Recover Vessel. Here we go. And here is the science value from our first flight. We can see an itemized list over here. And a total here of 37.7 science earned on the very first mission. My goodness, that's a lot of science. Let's go spend it. So we'll click Done here, and then we'll click on the Research and Development Building. And here we've got the very first one, which is all the parts that we've already got. See, they are owned. If we click on the next one, we get basic rocketry. How hard can rocket science be anyway? But this gives us the option of purchasing for five science out of 37. We can buy so much, or so it seems. Over here, we've got general rocketry with a thrust vectoring engine, which basically means that the engine will help point you in the direction that you want to go, make turning easier. A uh, separatron, which blows things away from other things. It's like a mini, ultra mini uh, solid rocket booster. Then we've got our giant solid rocket booster, which I think I'm going to get uh, next, just so we can get super duper high. Now we've got aerodynamic nose cone, winglets, and a radial decoupler, which was what I was talking about. So uh, this lets us uh, blow off extra parts when they're, when they're done. So what I can do is attach this to the central rocket, put a, a uh, solid rocket booster on this, and then when the solid rocket booster is burnt out, I can stage it out and it'll fly off and we won't have to carry around that dead weight anymore. Finally, we've got survivability uh, with a much, much, much more efficient uh, liquid fuel engine, uh, landing struts, and bigger parachutes for landing larger ships on different places. Uh, so I'm going to... Yes, <laughs> it took me a minute there. Uh, I'm going to spend this. I'm going to spend this on camera. And so this one is 20, but it's got this big, big, big boosters. Uh, which which I definitely definitely want to get up higher and higher. So that leaves us with 12, which is not enough to buy this guy, but that's fine. Uh, we'll check out advanced rocketry. We've got larger fuel tanks and radial mount engines and general construction struts. Very, very, very important for holding together larger ships. Uh, launch stability and enhancer that's uh, just scaffolding to, to help you stay stable in the launch pad. This is a different type of radial decoupler and a... Uh, stack tri couplers so you can go into from one fuel tank to three or uh, three engines. So, that being said, and look at this 45 science. We definitely have to have higher ambitions for our next mission. Uh, but this tree, it goes, it goes way over here. And it'll be fun getting there with you, with me. Together we shall do it. Let's head back here. This beautiful, beautiful place. It shall be ours, and we shall name all the things of all the things, and have things. <laughs> uh, yes. Alright, so this concludes the first tutorial episode. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I will do my best to answer them. And uh, we will definitely explore the new parts that we have earned uh, next time with a very ambitious episode, hopefully. Possibly. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll try for orbit, I think. Make things simple-ish. All right, guys. Uh, this is the Cleric Returns saying until I return, thanks for watching. Remember to leave a like, share this with your friends, and I will see you next time.